Okay, friends, I have here in my hot little hand a 6x8 album, black and white striped. Oh, my word. This is one of my most favorite patterns ever. Who's surprised by that one? This just so happens to be one word 2024. It's going to be my one word journal. And I have chosen my word. I've been working on my word all month long, actually. I'm just now getting popped in here last Friday of the month. I think maybe the last Friday of the month is when I will update this with you all. If you too are on a one word journal, a one word journey in a journal, um, or any kind of faith journal or self-development journal, anything like that kind of fits this category. So I'm going to walk you through this and then I have a technique here at the end. So I'm going to just tell you right up front, for sure January, probably February and March as well, I will be exploiting the 49 and Market Moonlit Garden Collection. So that is what you are primarily going to see in this journal to start the year off anyway. Um, I have started this album off with, with this plastic paper, kind of a hard to find paper. It's plastic paper because it is a sort of a heavy paper um, or acrylic. It's acrylic, but it's got a heaviness to it. Um, heavier than an acetate, although an acetate would be just as suitable to be a cover page for a journal. And what I did for this is I used bold numbers from scrapbook.com to cut out 2024 in their vellum. I'm a huge fan of their vellum. It's got this great opacity, got a little bit of weight, cuts beautifully. And I love this whole ethereal feel through this particular um, page. Now, what I did here on this page before I go further, when you get this plastic paper, which I will leave a link for where you can find it, uh, it has a lining on the front and, and on the back. I left the back on. I just, I kind of liked it sort of this uh, kind of a milky kind of look. It, you can take both pieces off for sure. I'm just letting you know. The reason it's not completely 100% clear is because there's still the lining on the back of this. So I sewed on the 2024 with a vellum. And then I also cut out using a modern alpha from also from scrapbook.com. My word, my word this year is shalom. I did not find this word. This word found me in such a way that I absolutely could not ignore it. And I am just, I, I don't think I've ever had a word encompass me as much as this word is already this year. Super grateful for that. Okay, so I also popped on a laser cut butterfly from Moonlit Garden just because. Well, and, and here's the thing. Already, as you open this book, my favorite thing is happening. You're just kind of enveloped in these layers. And I love these layers. And so the vellum's a layer. The word is a layer. The butterfly is a layer. The page is a layer. Then you have all these layers here underneath. Now you can see more details to this tag, which is brought to you by Scorched Timber Distress oxide. This is the oxide that I, I, sh I share how this particular print was made in my distress video. I will link that and I'll probably refer to that video a couple times because scorched timber is super here in this album. So what I did here after I made this tag, I then mounted it on a piece of the six by eight pattern from Moonlit Garden and then mounted that on a piece of vellum. And so I just... I uh, wanted all of this real softness to take place. I, I, not that I want a soft start to the year, but I actually kind of need a soft start to the year. The year just kind of came in like um, like wildfire. And so maybe, maybe this is my um, non-conscious or subconscious part of me reaching for those things that I have a little bit of control over here in my creative world. And I'm just choosing to keep it super soft. I don't know. There might be something to that. Okay. Something that I will be intentionally adding to this journal this year will be what I call art journal pages. I call them pages because I don't have them necessarily inside an art journal. I'm going to talk about this page very specifically in the uh, 
process part of this video. So hang on to the end for that because I'm going to talk about some different aspects and I have a technique that I'm going to share with you. Loved how this turned out. So what I did, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I am not currently enrolled. One little word comes from Allie Edwards and she has a beautiful program on her website and every year teaches one little word and then has a team of other creatives who add to that as well. I'm not taking that class this year. And I don't know if this is right or wrong to share, but I'm going to share it. I have several one little word classes in my classes, in my account at Allie Edwards. And it has been, as I shared in my video at the beginning of the year, all the different ways I'm going to be documenting this year. I think I shared in there that I've not been great about even completing one little word. So I, I didn't want to commit to buying a whole entire class and maybe not doing it. However, I am still under the influence of the classes that I do have. And I don't think I'm giving anything away to share that the first month of one little word, um, there is coming up with the definition of your word. There is inviting your word into your life. There is a quote that you might want to find. There's a note to yourself. Oh, I just realized I have not finished this. I have something I want to do here and I haven't done it yet. Boy, story of my life right there. Anyway, I used these classic upper and lower alpha stamps to give my mixed media three by four cards um, what I was going to have on that page. And I, there's a little bracket here in, in the, in the lower case that was super fun. So that is what that is about. I just created my own cards, which you're totally free to do. You can do whatever you want. I, I use the words I wanted to use to prompt their, their journal prompt cards here for that. And so I put my prompt on and then I just responded to my prompt with definition, with invite, with a quote that I have. And then I left space here for, um, pattern paper. This I trimmed from also a six by eight piece of Moonlit Garden. And then I'm always here for these guys. I love these cute little chip quotes that I, I literally keep here just right above my workspace. And I'm always going through them and just finding like the appropriate one. So I took one, I took a lot of the chipboard off of it and I laid it pretty flat here. I made my own label and I will continue to do this. So we'll see this throughout the whole book. And what I did for my label is I used a two inch circle punch, punched uh, pattern paper from Moonlit Garden out with that punch. And then I used the January, obviously for January, with black soot and folded it, stapled it, but then I didn't staple it to my page. I added adhesive. So it appears to be stapled. I didn't want my staple to be poking out on the other side is primarily why I did it that way. And then of course, of course, we're here for the rub on. So this little uh, journal card here had some extra space. I just grabbed one of the Moonlit Garden rub ons, one of the butterflies. I just thought it just kind of fit perfectly. I love how this turned out. Super love how my page turned out so far. So I'm still in January here as I'm continuing to respond to note. What's the note to myself? And I filled that card in there. Um, this was a fun little technique. And what I did is I took this washi tape. Yes, Moonlit Garden washi tape. I added it to a piece of cardstock because there's not a pattern paper like this. And I think there should be. So I made my own. And then I used one of the Heffy Doodle dies. I've been using this die. I got this pr purposely for Valentine's this year. Super love all these hearts. And I um, then die cut this heart from the washi and I added um, adhesive foam so it could pop it up. And it's actually on top of the page. So it's out of the pocket. This chip, this chip quote is also out of the pocket. I left all the chipboard on it. I just kind of thought that matched. And here, what I wanted to do is I wanted to stamp my word out and I just completely forgot to do that. So I'm just going to repeat my word. Haven't quite decided on which I'm going to use yet. And I'll post that when I do. All right. Last thing I want to share with you before we get to the process part is, um, there's another journal card that's part of the class that I'm using this from. I, I printed it out, but I kind of changed it up a little bit. So it's not a hundred percent what was released in that particular classroom. I went ahead and put it after I answered the prompts, I went ahead and put it in an open six by eight 
page protector. And then I did the same thing with that washi tape. I made it into paper by putting on cardstock. And then I just added a circle punch with a laser cut butterfly and then live the life you dream of because this was kind of the in terms of dreaming I, I i dream of how i want the word to kind of live in my life and so i thought that was an appropriate saying also for moonlit garden so thank you for looking at the walkthrough of january january is super done and i super love it i'm just I, I you'll hear me say this again i'm really excited about this journal this year so stay tuned and let's talk some more about this page all right, so we're going backwards here because this page hasn't actually been done yet. And the process part of this video, I wanted to talk about this page. And so to share, I used a Vicki Booten foundations paper. It's cut to about six and a half by close to eight inches. I'm going to just check to make sure. Yeah, close to eight inches. And I used this paper because I needed it a little bit wider. I knew I was going to have this in my book somehow and I wanted it wider than six by eight, which is what the mixed media paper is. And so just, just an option, just however you want this to go. And actually, yeah. Okay. So, um, I came in here with the scorched timber and I just inked all around the edges with that, just to give it some, a little bit of color. You can just see, I just came in with some stamping. I really like to go just to give you some insight to what you'll probably see. Pay attention. You'll probably see this in almost every one of my art journals is that I like to add some details up here and I kind of like to mirror it, but not exactly down here. Um, you can, but you can see, even though I have stamping here, I've stamping here, there's some other ink splatters. There's some ink, um, dobbing there with evergreen green bow, which I think is beautiful with this Moonlit Garden collection. So it's actually, to me, it's a relatively easy page. And let me know, maybe this is something you want me to start processing out. I haven't done a lot of art journaling because it is sort of kind of a hobby. And so I just sort of go for it and just do it and don't worry about recording it. Okay, so I have some things here. What I want to share with you, I've got a technique I want to share with you guys today. And so this is a card that I go into much more explanation on the Scorched Timber Distress video that I did. And I will link that in um, the details below. So this is going to um, come in here probably with this two inch wide foam adhesive because I really I really want it mounted just really strong like so I thought this is kind of fun there kind of bringing all the colors back together okay the technique I want to share with you guys though is I have this faith script die from waffle flower and I just I really love it I've picked this up recently super happy to have it I haven't used it yet kind of been saving it for this and even though my word's not faith, I'm just part of what I'm doing here with this one word journal. I'm just adding things in that just kind of support where I'm at with this word and just meditatively going about the creativity that is causing me to think about my word, think about the things that surround my word, expand upon my word. So that's just kind of an explanation of that. So I'm going to die cut this and I want to cover it with the scorched timber embossing glaze. It makes such a fun element. So let's get started on that. I'm going to do this first we need to die cut our faith okay our faith is die cut now and I'm gonna pull that out and there's two ways you can go about this you can do this technique on a piece of your mixed media paper to start or you can die cut your piece out and then go from there and um, by the way you can do this on any kind of die cut. I have done this. Well, let me show you. Again, I shared this in the distress video that I did. I did not share this technique, but if you can see the little bit of shine on this butterfly, that is the technique I used on that. I just love how it kind of sets it apart. So because, I'm trying to think how I'm going to go about this. Because I want, because, okay, a lot of because is here. The Embossing glaze is not opaque. It's actually very transparent. And I don't want my faith to be transparent in so many ways. So I'm going to come in here and see if I can't, there's a couple ways you could do this, is kind of coming in here. I just want to give it the faith itself. Um, 
think what I'll do, I'm kind of thinking as I do this, I didn't practice this first. We're just going for it. We're going to see, I'm going to go ahead and cover this. And so I'm just going to go ahead and blot it with the ink blending tool and just give it a bunch of color. And the thing about the Distress Oxide is that you can emboss over it. And so that's kind of what we're going to do here. We're going to see if this is if it stays wet enough to do that but I'll get some on there anyway and then we'll just follow up with the embossing ink so isn't that just pretty already just with that scorched timber I'm just partial I just think everything in the scorched timber is beautiful I'm gonna grab a separate piece of paper for my embossing powder the embossing glaze because I don't want it to get on the ink on this um silicone pad. So we'll take that off of there. And then what we need to do with this, while I have a heat tool from Ranger, this actually is going to need an embossing tool. Mine is well loved. So don't judge me on that. As we pull it out here and we're going to give this some time to melt. So, I don't know if you can hear me over this, but it's just like embossing powder, and I'm just looking for that melt factor to start. And here it goes, I see it going. And so I'm just gonna kinda heat it up until that is all done, all over. And then, I know I'm going to want another layer of the embossing glaze, so I'll be doing this a second time. And kind of for the sake of doing this on the video, I could just drop this into the powder, but I'm not going to. I will go ahead and ink it up with an embossing fluid, and you'll see how I do that next. So almost all done here. Just kind of looking at it in the light to see that I got all of my powder melted. Yep. Oop, I, I still don't have it here. Almost done. Okay. So I'll drop it back on my silicone mat. And so a couple things you could do here. You could ink this with an embossing ink, like I have here. You could also use the embossing um, dauber, which is what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to go all over this again. So you see what we did here? We went ahead and inked it up so that the embossing glaze was going to be um, more opaque than transparent. I didn't want it to be opaque. That's a great uh, technique for for um, sometimes, but I don't always want that. So I kind of like the fact that we have the option to do either one. So same thing, just gonna cover it here with the embossing glaze. And I keep wanting to close that, and I don't mean to, because I wanna go ahead and get that in there. And might be hard to tell, but I do have this completely covered with the powder. I'm going to go ahead and clean up my powder. I do not, I want to, I want to get the lid closed on this as soon as possible. All right. And then one more pass with the embossing gun. So grabbing that, here we go. It's just going to create, it's like, um, it's, it's DIY embellishing for sure, because you know how some collections come with chipboard words? This is kind of that, but you got a little bit of shine, you got a little bit of sheen, um, you have great color, you can choose whatever color you want. It's just, there's just a lot of advantage to going about making your dyes like this. So, can you see that that's all covered? Pretty happy with that. So I'm gonna clean everything up here. I'm just going to hit that one more time. All right, good, good, good. Clean all this up here, and then we're going to put my page together. All right, like I said, I want a really strong 
um, adhesion to my page here with this little art card that I made. So it's almost like two and run one, right? So I made this art page. I have an art card. It's going to be the thing that I share here on this channel all the time. And if we are just in a place of just needing to just kind of make for making sake, that um, find a way to save those pieces, those elements, those tags, those art cards, those pages, you might not use them immediately. You might just want to be in the making moment, right? And so I kind of preach this all the time. I just know myself, sometimes I get into this place of, well, I have to make something. It has to count. It has to work itself into a page or a card or a tag. And sometimes this is not the case. And an artist likes to um, be artistic for the um, beauty of being artistic. And we're artists. We're artistic. We're doing the same thing. Now, I'm looking here because I had, there it is, I had a little... Um, filled with hope and strength that I wanted to add to this. This is from Moonlit Garden. This is from the um, one of the laser cut packages. So what I'm going to do here is grab my glue in the spirit of not liking my embellished pieces to be flat. There's a couple things we could do, right? We could add a lot of layering elements here, which is something that I kind of preach here. I don't want that. I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell but in the simplicity of what's going on here, this is absolutely gorgeous. This is just so beautiful to me. So as I look at this, I think I want some glue where this cross comes across the F and where this H comes here too. I'm going to go ahead and let the top of the F kind of sit here at the um, top of or at the bottom of this card. I'm all for that. I think that looks nice. Just kind of how my thought process goes into this as I work on these kind of pages and where placement's going to go. And maybe it's helpful to you too, what, what the thinking is. Okay, so... A little goes a long way here with this glue. So I'm going to put a dab there and a dab there. Come back in here. And it's so nice and strong too because of having embossed this with the embossing glaze. And just gonna kind of tap that there a little bit. What I might need to do, might need to give this a little bit of time to dry. I'm gonna go ahead and carefully place this stamp block on it while it's drying. And we're just going to give that a few minutes. That's good. And a fixed on there well. I'm just, I just love when a plan comes together. And so for this, now I have room. See, I tell you guys all, this, all the time, don't adhere flat because sometimes you realize, oh, I want to, I want something to pop underneath there. And I, and I think I do want this to pop underneath here. Maybe like this, maybe all the, maybe like this. I think maybe like that. I'm going to actually, um, give the edges a little bit of distress. I kind of kind of could have distressed this. I just didn't. I don't know why not. It could have just, but it's got some great pop-up feature from that wider foam adhesive anyway. So it's good. It's good. It's good. It's, it's like, like there's no wrong way. There's no right way. It's just whatever. It's just whatever. I just, I love that. And I have an article coming up my blog that talks about this in the, in the sense of Gosh, you guys, look how we get to add to our ordinary days in extraordinary ways. I am here for it. I love that we get to do that. So I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here to the back. Again, not adhering this down flat. My mantra, don't make it flat. Have some fun with it. I don't want it covering this F. I actually want it to go under the F. I think, oh, except for the hope being a little covered up. Can't cover up our hope. And then that, of course, needs some dry time too, but it's not in a place where I'm going to knock it over. still think it needs to come over some more, which is kind of the benefit of having that uh, glue right there in the middle of this. I could just kind of move it all over. So that's what we came up with on this art page. I may or may not have said in the little walkthrough, I'm hoping to add an art page um, every month. Um, so appreciate you guys being here. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you have any questions, please for sure drop those in. And I will see you in the next video.